Hello, photographers, and welcome to this episode of Urban Edge Academy. We're going to be jumping into a Affinity Photo document today. I want to kind of show off what we do with our process on exporting photos from Affinity Photo here. Baby, I'm a All right, so we've got an M1 iPad Pro here. We're gonna jump into an Affinity Photo portrait that we've edited here, and we're gonna show all the different ways that you can actually export this from Affinity Photo. I'm gonna be using the iPad screen recording feature so you can see exactly what we're doing as we're doing it. Let's jump in. All right, so with this document, we got a few layers here. It's not too extensive of an edit, but we wanna go ahead and export this uh, in a couple different ways. So the first way is for social media optimization. The second way is for a full res portrait. Now for the full res, we don't actually uh, do a logo on there. So we wanna get that watermark off there. And then we want to go to the first three dots with the page icon around it and go straight to export. Now you can resize the document. The second option here is resize. You can resize the document right now if you know you're gonna be working with just different dimensions and things like that in the future, or you can export it and resize at the same time. So that's what we're gonna do. So with the export function, you have all the different options at the top. PDF and PSD are some of the biggest options that we use, also JPEG. So with portraits, you typically don't use the PNG option, but if you know you're gonna be sending it to a client for proofs and things like that, you can absolutely use the PDF uh, function here. Um, select your color space um, for printing uh, or for digital, uh, wherever you're gonna put that. So that's fantastic. PSD is really great. That's worked really well in the past. If we know we're gonna be making some different edits on our MacBook uh, or something like that, that one will work really well. Uh, and then JPEG, of course, is what we typically use for our social media version and then um, any high-res JPEGs that we want to actually send the client. So for this one, we pretty much leave all the options the same except for our naming convention. So we have different naming conventions we use if it's a dash edit or a dash social or web version, things like that. Affinity Photo does a reasonable job on the compression and the resizing, and the lock here in the middle actually ties, of course, the width and the height together uh, if you um, want to keep that same aspect ratio. So if you did tap resize, it would re completely resize the document. So if, you, if your workflow starts with a single document and you resize it and then work from there, the big advantage to that is smaller file sizes just help the performance way more than if you were to work with the big file size and then export the smaller ones from there. So depending on what version of iPad you have, you can actually bring your full res portrait in here, tap on the height, and then resize it to something a little bit more reasonable. And it will go ahead and keep that same aspect ratio, resize the width and the height, and convert the pixels, whatever you wanna do here, depending on what you need to do. But once you do that, now that you have a smaller file size, performance is no longer an issue because it's not absolutely massive. So that's an option. Keep that in mind if you want um, a little bit better performance depending on the version of the iPad that, you're, that you have and that you're working with. What we typically do is go straight to export here. And when you go to export, we use, like I said, the JPEG export the most. PSDs worked really well for us in the past. And then PDF, of course, bakes everything in. So now that you have the JPEG option selected, you can go to height. You can, of course, lock and unlock the aspect ratio on the height here. Once everything's locked, our social media version that we do is 2000 on the long edge of the portrait. Now, something else we always do at the very bottom here, you notice that's 2.22 megabytes at the very bottom of the page here. So that's doing a preview of what that would look like at 100% and you're getting 2.2 megabytes. So that's a pretty good reduction in size. You know, it was up from, you know, 15 or 20 meg or something like that, depending on what you're doing. The other thing that we do for social media is drop the quality down to about 90%. And now we get 435K. Now for websites and things like that, we try to get as close as possible to 200 kilobytes. 200 kilobytes ensures very, very quick load time. Now Instagram's if you're uploading to Instagram, it has its own compression, so things don't matter at all there. But if you're hosting it on its on your own website, you wanna get as close as possible to 200 kilobytes. So if you have to resize it down to 75%, 223, that's probably what I would go with. So you can see 223.42 kilobytes at the bottom of the screen here. 
that's telling us what the size is going to be if we export at this quality uh, with this height and, and width here. Now, if you look at this, you're not going to notice anything like this, you know, 2000 pixels. Once that goes online and you reduce the actual size, it's going to look fantastic no matter what. We don't mess with any other real options here. You know, you have other things here for predetermined quality of the JPEG. None of that really matters uh, too much if you're setting your own. So we always go to custom here and then we do 90% and then send that off to the client with the watermark. So that's fantastic that if you've, if you've got the iPad, then you can work with the bigger documents. You can export as many of these as you need for all the different variations. So if you need to resize before you go to print or before you send to a client, you can do all that stuff. If you're doing one thing that we've done in the past is client reveal videos. So a lot of times clients like to see the photos they're going to have the option to purchase in a video. So we do that by exporting a bunch of photos all at once and then we resize them down uh, from that so that they can go in a video. They, they don't have to be very big to go in a video here. So uh, a YouTube video would be 1920 on the width by 1080. So this is obviously gonna give us a ton. It's a portrait. Um, so this is what we might resize it to if we were putting it in a video. If you really wanna make sure the details there, you can simply double that which is why we pretty much always pick 2000 as the height that gives us really great quality no matter where we put the photo, but we always resize the quality. We adjust that down to 90% there. Now, if this was going out for the web, we're going to do our dash social or web, whatever we end up doing there. That's how we rename it and how we actually organize the files on the computer there. That's social. We actually have the watermark on there if it's for social. If it's not, we export we still, even if we do full resolution, which is the 6720 you see by 4480, um, we still adjust the quality. We're at 28 megabytes right now. That's a ridiculous file size. But if we readjust this down to 90% quality, look what happens when we go to 28 megabytes, boom, down to just under six megabytes. So that's a huge difference on transfer time and everything like that. Now, we also deliver photos to clients uh, with the cloud, like Google Drive and things like that, Dropbox. If you're using any of those, you're really gonna want the smallest file size possible. So if you still wanted something that was super high quality and printable, you could adjust this down to 5,000 and still get a really, really good quality, but it's also half the size there. So those are the options here. But yeah, hop into, hop into Affinity Photo if you have a chance. I think it's probably still on sale right now. It's like 20 or 25 bucks, but that's where they keep all of these export options uh, right in here. So you've got the PDF, You've got the PSD, you can do all that kind of stuff. But it's so cool that they have all these options built in. We've got EPS stuff, so if you're using Illustrator or a vector type stuff, we have that uh, format available to us. And then SVG, if you know what that is, um, depending on the type of document illustration you're doing, SVG, it's so nice to have that built into it. You wouldn't use that for portraits though. So that's how we export from here. So yeah, check out Affinity Photo, go to the export and play with the different options here. And as soon as you adjust that quality, notice that file size go down. Now the other thing that saves maybe a little bit of space is if you actually adjust the height down, you're doing your normal uh, social or website kind of export here and then you don't embed any metadata. That saves a little bit of space as well, about 10 kilobytes there. So that's another option. But those are kind of the basics here on exporting from Affinity Photo. It's super helpful uh, if you can start with the high resolution portrait and then export every single size that you need from there. And remember, if you don't have a higher end iPad or something like that, as soon as you open the document, I would definitely recommend you hop over and click resize. And then as soon as you go here, figure out what size is going to work best for you. So if we just needed a good high resolution portrait, we could click 4000 and then completely resize this one down. And it's still going to be super great, but the performance is going to be that much better because it's not quite as big a file size. And then we can go to export that. And now we see that it's at 4000 by the 2667 here. And we can adjust that down even further with the quality and still get a really, really nice file size here. All right, guys, so that's how we resize things in Affinity Photo when we're doing our client deliverables or our magazine or something like that. Uh, that's the easiest way we found is to start with a large file, then export out every size that we need, depending on if it's going in a video, if it's going on Instagram, if it's going on a website, things like that, or if it's being delivered uh, for print to the client, we can export that all right here from Affinity Photo. It's been super quick and helpful and things like that. 
Um, we haven't set up any fancy macros or anything like that. We used to do that with um, Photoshop on the uh, on the desktop computers um, is to get everything exported in Lightroom and then you can set a batch job to resize everything for you. But we're doing everything kind of one at a time here um, as we migrate everything to the iPad and we're not doing any huge batch jobs anymore. So um, if you are shooting a wedding or something like that and everything needs resized, you're definitely going to want to look at macros and batch jobs and things like that. I think that's built into, I know it's built into Photoshop and I'm sure it's built into it some level into Affinity Photo on the desktop. But yeah, this is just kind of that one-off resize that we're doing as we take photos individually here. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, hit a like and subscribe button. We're putting out all kinds of educational videos trying to help photographers take things to the next level. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Baby, I'm a whore.